Welcome back. Well, in keeping with our decorating do's and don'ts and what's in, what's out theme recently, I took a look at what the consensus is among current decorators on what makes an interior look cheap and tacky. Seems to me this is the sort of problem we can all fall into from time to time. No one has absolutely perfect taste on every aspect of decorating, but I think we would all just as soon avoid the mistakes we can avoid. So, today we are taking a look at the cheap and tacky and what some alternatives are. So, when we come back. One of the things that most of these decorating mavens agreed on was that cheap tacky tends to be something we associate with, among other things, matchy-matchy furniture. Furniture in sets or suites where everything is so cloyingly matched up that it's clear. All we did was walk into a furniture store, look around the showroom, and buy a room straight out of the showroom. Now, the image we're looking at right now is a very, very matchy living room set. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. It's, uh, I mean, if this is your style, then this is your style. It's very traditional. It's elegant. You could have seen a room like this in, say, uh, 1980, and it wouldn't have seemed unusual or out of place. If you walked into a room like this today, it wouldn't seem unusual or out of place. What it does seem is straight off the showroom floor. Notice all of the upholstered pieces are all the same. They've got the same upholstery, the same wood trim, the arms are in this navy leather and the, uh, the seat cushions and the back cushions are in a print and then of course there are the matching navy throw pillows. There are two end tables and a coffee table and mind you, this was the way you bought set furniture as far back as the 50s, the coffee table to end tables. Although, frankly, some things have changed. Back in the 50s, you would have gotten a sofa and two chairs. Here we have a sofa, we have a, a chaise, really, and a settee. Same basic principle. We've got our end tables, we have our two matching table lamps, and we have our big traditional painting over the sofa. Here's our coffee table. There's a dish and a book in the 50s, as we all know, that would have been an ashtray. This matchy-matchy look has been with us forever. Decorators are now telling us it is cheap and tacky looking. So let's look at a few more of these. This is a bedroom suite. Uh, as you can see, we've got a bed in a whitewashed wood, and it looks like the furniture has been somewhat distressed. This is not natural wear. This is artificial wear. This is when they've gone across and sanded paint off the edges of the drawers and off the, the posts of the bed. The dresser and the night table are a perfect match, and again, matchy-matchy, a little too matchy-matchy. Now, to be fair, this isn't the worst of the matchy-matchy. The worst of it is when you have the bed 
Two end tables, the dresser, the tall bureau, and maybe even the wardrobe, all in exactly the same style. It's too much, and it, it looks like someone else put your room together for you. So this is actually nice furniture. I have no problem with this stuff. Well, I'm not really crazy about artificial distressing, to be honest. But in terms of a basic rustic interior look, I don't have an argument with this. The problem is it's a little too cloying. Here is another one. Now, in this one, we have a sofa and two chairs. And remember, we got that back in the 50s. We also have our two matching end tables and the matching table lamps on top of the matching end tables. But today, modern sensibilities have changed. So we don't have a coffee table. We have a large ottoman. And the chairs are in complementary prints. And of course, it's tied right in to the fabric on the throw pillows on the sofa. Yeah, overkill on the matchy-matchy. Another bedroom. Now, as I mentioned before, in a bedroom suite, uh, the usual is the, the bed, the two night tables. We only have one night table here for some reason. The dresser, the bureau. Uh, in this case, we actually even have drawers under the bed. How nice. Too much, too much the same. And once again, it looks like you just walked into the store, grabbed the first thing you saw, and said, aha, this is my new room. Here's another one, and this is reflecting modern furniture. As I mentioned before, the ottoman is replacing the coffee table. In this case, we have a settee, we have a sofa, with a sort of built-in lounge coming out of the side, the matching ottoman, and all of these pieces are just identical. The only thing we don't have that's super matchy-matchy here is the end tables. We have one end table, but notice, even though we have a table lamp and a floor lamp here, they have identical shades. So, yeah, we are taking matchy to the extreme. Now, this one, I hope some of you are sharp-eyed and have noticed, this is a hotel room. And that's what matchy-matchy furniture has always looked like to me. Like it just came out of a hotel suite. And as you can see, that is what hotel suites look like. Everything is so matched and so coordinated that... There is no individuality, no personality in it at all. We've got the same colors running through the entire suite. The purple from the living room chairs are flowing right into the bench at the end of the bed and the pillows on the bed. And it's just, it's overkill is what it is. So that is something we want to avoid. No one wants to feel like they're walking into, you know, the Ritz-Carlton when they go into somebody's home. We want to see more personality. So let's take a look at how we can break that. Uh, I looked for a number of rooms uh, in different styles to try to see how we can get away from that super matched look. This was the first one. I like this room. Now, mostly because very nearly all of this furniture is the sort of thing you could pick up from just an ordinary thrift shop, a Salvation Army, a junk shop, perhaps even by the side of the road. We have an iron bed here. Now, this is not a very old iron bed because it appears to be queen-sized. And as we've already discussed, queen-size beds were not available until after the Second World War. And they didn't even really become entrenched until the 60s and 70s. That little settee in front of the window 
oh my, I actually saw settees that I swear are virtually identical to this in people's homes in the 1970s. It was a thing they called it French provincial furniture. There is no such style as French provincial, by the way. It's a term decorators made up. Yeah, you could find that in somebody's house. It even has that 1970s gold-colored upholstery. What I like about this is even though we've got a very bland color palette, by the way, I don't mind bland in the bedroom. You want to go to sleep there. You know, you don't want to be frightened when you wake up in the middle of the night by the orange walls or, you know, the purple curtains. Nice bland color scheme, but it's not, it's not static. There's a light gold coverlet on the bed. I don't know if that is actually a comforter or just a duvet cover. If it's just a duvet cover, as we all know, cheap, cheap, cheap to pick those up. The darker gold of the settee going right into the brown of the curtains. Again, you can get curtains like that at any home store. Uh, and they are not expensive. It's just a machine-made, lacy, open weave. The pictures on the walls are purely thrift store finds or salvaged from grandma's attic. I like the little fireplace in the corner. The mirror over top is also nice, but again, thrift store find. So the reason I chose this room is this is a room that in my area, I could put that room together for under a thousand dollars. Doesn't that remind you of name that tune? Yes, I can name that room for under a thousand bucks. In my area, that's how inexpensive this room would be. In Manhattan, Los Angeles, probably three thousand. But of course, keep in mind, everything in Manhattan and LA is going to be a lot more expensive than here in South Central Pennsylvania. Also, notice the end table because the end table is not really an end table or a nightstand. Let me show you what it is. This is a basic telephone table. They used to be everywhere, and for those of you who are too young to remember, there was a time when phones stayed put. They were actually wired right into the wall, and we had to have little tables for them. And the tables generally looked like this. They had a couple of drawers for the pencil and paper so you could take notes, and that shelf on the bottom held the phone books. So, Easy, cheap, beautiful room that you could put together out of your local thrift store. This is a totally different direction. This living room is so non-matchy-matchy. The things I love about this are, actually, I, I don't hate this room, although I should. Notice, nothing is properly aligned. Nothing. We have a sofa that is off-center on the rug, a painting that is off-center above the sofa. Uh, we have a, a sofa that frankly looks like it came out of the 80s or the 90s in a wonderful sort of brick color. On the, uh, the left, we have a chair that looks like it's a 1960s Danish modern piece. I bet you could grab a chair like that out in front of a dentist's office when they're redecorating, just tossed to the street. The tree next to it is planted in a, a bucket. It looks like a tar bucket to me, just a bucket. And the green chair on the right is so 70s, it's not even funny. And I actually saw chairs like that in the 70s. The tables don't match anything. They don't match each other. They don't match the furniture. There is a half round console table, and that is to the left of the sofa. And clearly it's being used as a desk. Notice this chair. I can't get a very good look at the chair. It looks like a barrel chair. It looks like something that was popular in the uh, 70s. Uh, sort of a, an updated director's chair when they had these chairs that were covered in fabric, like the director's chairs, just canvas slung on the chair. This looks like it's some faux leather covering this chair. 
incredible. And this is actually a great room. There's so much personality here. Not my taste. Probably not a lot of people's taste. But it's great. It hangs together. And absolutely everything in this room looks like it's the sort of thing you might have picked up by the side of the road when someone else was throwing it out. Bedroom, because I did show you a lot of matchy-matchy bedrooms. Look at this one. We don't even have a headboard. There is very little in this room. It's rather minimalist. A large bed. The nightstand that we can see, and that is in the right side of the picture, toward the bottom, is just a stand holding a removable tray. There is another nightstand on the other side of the bed. I can only see the corner of it, but that's enough to tell me it doesn't match our tray table on the right side of the photo. Again, we have a wonderful little fireplace in the corner. This is great. And by the way, those are easy, easy add-ons. You could throw a fireplace into a room. Now, it's not going to be a functioning fireplace, but you'll get all the charm of the mantle. Like I say, easy, easy, easy. We have a tripod lamp here, and the color scheme is very cool, very subtle here. Pinks and grays on the white, a little bit of blue. Great. Definitely no matches here. This living room is another one of those different pieces from different eras all thrown in together. It's a little less spunk-eyed than the last living room we saw. But look at this. We have a sofa that could have come out of the 80s or 90s. We have chairs. And both of those chairs look very 1970s. A coffee table that looks like it came out of Ikea. An end table, and this is on the left of the sofa that certainly doesn't match the coffee table. A floor lamp. There is a, a wall light to the left of the sofa. That is, in fact, not a wall sconce, you can tell, because there is a cord with an inline switch running down from it. This may be simply a wall sconce that someone rewired so that it worked independently and didn't have to be tied directly into the electrical system, but could be plugged in. Our color scheme is really simple. Most of the colors are coming from that great painting over the sofa. The throw pillows on the sofa are picking up the colors in the painting. Overall, for a room that has no cohesive style at all, this is a really nice room. And this. This is one that I really wanted you to see uh, for bedrooms. Yes, much of the character in this room comes from these heavily stuccoed walls with the, the live edge wood. I, I don't know where this room came from. It looks like the attic of, of a Parisian garret or something. But notice what they've done instead of a nightstand. A couple of old suitcases. So there is a bed that is rather ornately styled. It definitely hearkening back to that French provincial stuff that was popular years ago. But still, we have a uh, a collection of items on the wall. They all seem to be religious in character. And there are just two suitcases on the floor. This is our nightstand. And it has the added advantage of storage. I love this because it is so eclectic. Yes, nothing matches anything. But there's a lot of personality in this room. And let's take a look at this one, because this is elegant. Some of the other rooms had a very casual flavor to them. This one 
Not so much. The sofa and the chair are just traditional furniture. In fact, this sofa, other than the color, does not look all that different from the last two sofas I showed you that I said could probably have been picked up by the side of the road. No, very traditional, classic lines. The, the chair is a wing chair. They've been with us forever. We have a coffee table that, again, probably looks like it came from Ikea. All of the end tables, or occasional tables, interestingly enough, are round, and there is not a single repetition of the wood surfaces here. The floor is a dark walnut-looking wood. The round table that is almost out of the photograph, this is in, in the lower left corner. As you can see, it's sort of a fruit wood color. We have a gold metallic table next to the wing chair. It's nice and round. We have a painted white table next to the sofa. There is a mirror, and I, I believe that is a full-length mirror that is simply propped up against the wall, points to them for that. And a very bright and vibrant piece of art. This is on the right-hand side large piece of art. Looks quite modern. In contrast to the very traditional nature of the rest of the room, and a brightly colored rug, again, modern, in contrast to the rest of the room. This is a room with personality, and absolutely nothing matches. This one. All right, I have to be honest with you, I included this because this this is a house I want to visit. I want to go there. I want to sit down in that chair in front of the sunny window and have a cup of tea with the owners. This is just oozing with personality. We have this large trunk, and that's the center of the photo, really. And it's got a bunch of heads on it. That is so bizarre. I really want to meet the people who live with a bunch of heads on a trunk in their house. We've got bookcases. We have this wonderful old painted chest of drawers on the left, and there's a head on top of that, too, and a hat on the head. There's a red damask brocaded wallpaper. It's probably flocked. It's hard to tell from the picture, but I believe it is. A red and white checked floor. This wonderful sort of teal green chair. Not only do none of these items match, they, they don't even go together, but it says personality to me. I look at that and I say, I, I want to know who lives there. I want to know who has collected these heads and why. I want to know what those books are. It really just draws you in. And this is what the designers are trying to tell us. That when we pick out individual items, when the pieces in our homes reflect us, our interests, then suddenly the room is becoming interesting. The room is becoming engaging. It's drawing us in. And this one in particular is drawing me in big time. But I also have to say that all of those other rooms uh, that I was showing you, the non-matchy-matchy personality rooms, every last one of them appealed to me so much more than the static, oh, look, my sofa matches my chair. Oh, look, all of my end tables are in exactly the same style Oh, look, I have a pair of lamps. So, lesson to be learned from this. Get what you love. Get pieces that express you. And if you do that, it will work. You can make it work. 
All right, I have more along the same lines. The things that the modern decorating mavens are telling us make our homes look cheap and tacky, along with some images of ways you can get around that. So, that's for tomorrow. This is what I have for you today. So, next time we get together, we're going to take a look at more things that make your homes look cheap and tacky. I will see you then. And in the meantime, we're going to watch a slideshow on the way out. Have a terrific day. Thank you.